Please be seated. I think that's the first time I remembered to turn my mic on before I left uh, in the last couple of weeks, so uh, I'm feeling somewhat smug in myself. Uh, just uh, two brief announcements. Actually, no, let's say three, because I want to open by wishing you all a happy new year. Um, so please, on behalf of our church, receive that a happy new year. May 2022 be a blessing to you. Um, also to say, uh, you've maybe seen on the screens um, the, our, our little push uh, for, for gift aid. Um, uh, really what we're asking is if you are a UK taxpayer, um, would you please take one of the gift aid forms that are at the back, uh, fill it in and pop it back to myself or, or Sarah. Um, if you're not here physically and watching online, you can, uh, you, if you want to contact me, I'll uh, send you out one of those forms and you can electronically send it back and we can get it to, to Sarah that way as well. But really the, the uh, gift aid is, um, well it's effectively money from the government uh, that tags 25% onto your giving. It doesn't cost you anything but it can make a huge difference to us. So if you consider filling in one of those forms, if you think you have already um, but you're just not quite sure, um, Pop one in any way uh, and uh, we, can, uh, we can do the work of, of removing duplication. Um, so if in doubt, fill it out um, and that would be great. Also uh, at the back, um, well, we're also asking people to consider giving by standing order. Uh, one of the things we realised during the, the pandemic was that as people moved to standing order, we were able to see how much comes in and how much comes out. It's a great gift for for budgeting as well as not having to worry about making large lodgements or even burdening accounting team. Um, so if you would consider giving uh, in that way, it would also be a great support. Um, however, we do appreciate everything that you, you do give and the way you support the ministry of our church. Speaking of the ministry of our church, um, an important one kicks off again next week uh, as Sunday Club um, meets back next week at um, 11 30 after morning call um, in the uh, church hall so morning call will happen then at, at uh, a quarter past ten um, then moving on then to sunday club at half eleven so please do uh, join us for for those uh, well for the morning call but if, you, if you're under it if you're under uh, under um, 12, I think your primary school age would be great to have you as well at, the, at our Sunday Club. We're going to take a few moments of silence so that all we hear are the voices of children, after which Julie is going to lead the opening part of our service this morning. First hymn 330, God is here.
Almighty God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may dwell in you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The Lord have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love. And peace. Almighty God, Almighty God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we, we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask you to stand to join with us together in the glory. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. collect for today. Almighty God, in the birth of your Son, you have poured on us the new light of your incarnate word and shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in this light and dwell in his love, that we may know the fullness of his joy, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Linda will bring us our first reading. First reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, 
which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who are the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. We join together in our second hymn, hymn 102, Name of All Majesty. That's our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Saviour Christ from John chapter 1 beginning verse 10. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to, all who died, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace and place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. This is the Gospel of our Lord. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> but, uh, throughout uh, Christmas, we have heard time and time again of the child born of Mary. Through our, our, our nativity play, our, our, our carol services, our carols and our, our services in general, we have heard the incredible story of the God who walked among us, who dwelt among us, who drew alongside us. That's a wonderful story. But it's only part of the picture. I'm sure you're, you're aware of the, the five W's. We even have a, have a learning centre dedicated to it in Belfast, uh, W5. I think it's still going. But the five W's are who, what, where, when, and why. Over the last couple of weeks, we, we have focused uh, our, um, on the Christmas story, uh, that focus on the first four W's. So we had the who? Well, Jesus. We had the what? God becoming man. We had the where? Bethlehem. We had the when? The reign of the Emperor Augustus. But today's readings focus us on that last W. They focus on the why. Why was Jesus born? Why did God become man 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem? Why? Well, it is that fifth W that John in that, that gospel reading and Paul in, in his letter to the Ephesians speaks to this morning. And the answer we hear is to win for himself a people. The why is to adopt a family and to give them the life that comes with that. Just, just listen to John's words in that, that gospel reading that Linda just read for us. To all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of, a, of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. It's a similar message to Paul in verses 4 and 5 of, of that epistle reading from Ephesians. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. This time the language is of adoption, but the idea is the same. The idea of God gathering for himself a family, a people of his own. And that's the why of Christmas. That's the why Jesus was born. That's why God became man 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. C.S. Lewis once wrote, The Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. I say Christmas is a, is a family time, and these passages, one from John and the other from Ephesians, tell us that the purpose of Christmas was God gathering a family for himself. Drawing alongside us so that we might draw alongside him. But notice who takes the initiative here. In that reading from Ephesians, God predestines us to be part of his family in verse 5. And then he predestines again in verse 11, this time to live as, as members of his family. Just listen to verse 11 again. In him we were also chosen 
having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. That word predestined means that God wills it to happen. He decrees it. It means God takes the initiative. It's all God's doing. No one else's. Just God. We contribute nothing. He contributes everything. And that idea that the initiative rested solely on God appears in in verse 6 as well, where Paul tells us that membership to God's family, God's people, is freely given. In fact, in verse 4, Paul even goes as far as to say that we couldn't have contributed to it because he chose us before we were even created. And that same God-given gift appears in that John reading as well as we hear that the coming of God to be included as his family and people comes not from human will, but from God. These words are a slap in the face to the self-righteous, but a huge hope and comfort to those aware of our own unworthiness. They remind us that our acceptability to God, our membership to his family, and the life that that brings is not based on what we do or on who we are. Membership to God's people is not earned, but is given. Rather, it rests on God taking the initiative. During lockdown last year, Alison and I uh, binge watched the show The Good Place um, on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, I have to say it's quite good, though I'm going to give you a bit of a spoiler. But the show is set in the afterlife and it asks the question what it means to get to heaven or to use the language of the show, The Good Place. And during the show it talks about how our actions have a moral value that is added up. But it later reveals that no one can make the grade. No one is good enough. So when they ask about Abraham Lincoln, well, they're informed he's a politician. But it's a theme that runs through the length and breadth of philosophical literature. No one is good enough. No one is worthy. It runs through the Bible as well and we remind ourselves of that as we gather every Sunday to confess our sins to God. No one is righteous, not even one as the psalmist and Paul reminds us. But therein lies the great hope of the Christmas message, of the Christmas gift of Jesus and what is achieved on the cross. The gift of membership to God's family, to God's people and the life that comes with it. It's a hope that is spelt out in our own 39 articles at the end of our prayer books, where in Article 11 we read, we are accounted righteous before God only for the merits of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ by faith and not according to our works or deservings. It's a gift that regardless of who we are, or what we do, or who we, or what we've done. Through Jesus and his death, God welcomes us into his family. It's a wonderful gift. What a wonderful hope. What a liberation it is to know that we don't have to earn our way to God, because God in his, in his love takes the initiative. That's the why of Christmas. God takes the initiative to create for himself a, a, a people of his own, drawing us into his family. He dwelt alongside us so that we might dwell alongside him. The Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. But the whole process of, of gift giving is, is a two-part motion, isn't it? There's the giving of the gift, but there's also the receiving of a gift. Most of us have been through that, that process quite a bit over the last uh, few weeks, 
But the same is true here of God's gift. There is the giving of the gift of, of membership to God's family and the life that comes with it. But there's also the need to receive the gift. A reception that is spelt out in both readings. A reception of belief. To acknowledge the gift, to believe that what God has done in Jesus, opening for ourselves membership to his family. And with that belief comes praise. That word praise appears throughout the, the, the reading from Ephesians. It is the natural response to genuine belief that in what God has done. It's a praise that goes beyond our word, the words we say or sing this morning in this building, but rather shapes our lives. It's the sort of praise that the epistle to the Ephesians calls us to. Paul sets out first what God has done in this letter, and then how we live in the light of that. That's the sort of praise and worship he calls to us to in, in his letter to the Romans when he writes, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So if the, the why to Christmas is that God takes the initiative bringing us into his family, the so what to that why is a life of praise and worship born out of our belief in that gift. As we, we look forward beyond Christmas, as the sentimentality and the, the joy of those nativity plays, carols and the celebrations in general starts to fade, let's never lose sight of the why of Christmas. As God dwelt alongside us so that we might dwell alongside him. The why of Christmas that saw God take the initiative, bringing to himself a people, a family, that we might live lives of praise as we receive this wonderful gift. Amen. And to the King of Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. I ask you to stand once again as we join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
we remain standing as we sing our next hymn, hymn 64, in thanks and praise, in Christ alone. Lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, on this first Sunday of the new year, thank you for all that you've allowed into our lives this past year, the good along with the hard things, which have reminded us how much we need you and rely on your presence filling us every single day. Thank you for helping us to make it through this difficult year. Thank you that you've carried us through the uncertainty and pain of hard losses. We are constantly aware of how much we need you, your grace, your strength, your power working through even the toughest days. Help us to remember that the gift of Christ, Emmanuel, is our greatest treasure not just at Christmas, but for the whole year through. Fill us with your joy and the peace of your spirit. Direct our hearts and minds towards you. Thank you for your reminder that both in seasons of celebration and in seasons of brokenness, you are still with us. You will never leave us. We appreciate that uncertainty and concern is still present with us and healing is needed in the lives of many 
including Frida, Desi, Andrew, Helen, Desi, Katie, Sonia, Roy, David, Katie, Rebecca, Helen, Kate, and others known personally to us. Give them and their loved ones hope and security in your love and your sovereignty. You are trustworthy and true and promise to make all things new. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, on this first Sunday of the new year, with thoughts of fresh beginnings, we pray for your spirit to lead us each step of this new year. We ask that you guide our decisions and turn our hearts to deeply desire you above all else. We ask that you open doors needing to be opened and you close ones needing needed to be shut tight. We ask that you help us release our grip on the things to which you've said no, not yet, or wait. We ask for help to pursue you first, above every resolution, dream and desire you've put within our hearts. Help us to apply this first in our own hearts and through spirit-filled lives, may you help us to apply this and bless us as a church family here in St. Patrick's. Help us to be supportive of the, of the ministry of your church here in Brishian, using words of support and encouragement in conversation and prayer for Andrew and for each other. Help us to appreciate and support all those in roles and areas of responsibility whose work is to deepen and widen your love in this place and to extend your kingdom. Guard us from negativity and criticism which comes from the work of the devil and is harmful to us all. We know our lives are far from perfect and the enemy would want nothing more than to take us straight down before we even get out of these doors. But we believe in your truth and we have Jesus in our lives. And because of that, we have all that we need to live each day free to use the gifts of the Spirit you have blessed us with. Father, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, help us choose to find our joy and strength in you today and throughout 2022, to choose to walk and unite in love over argument, differences and division, to choose to set our eyes on you over the struggles and distractions of this world, to choose your peace over worry, to choose to stop and show kindness over hurry, to choose forgiveness over disunity and resentment, to choose your spirit-filled power over relying on our own strengths and abilities. Lord, open our eyes to see the power in your word. Open our ears to know what you are saying. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and draw us close into your presence. Speak to us and show us your ways, O Lord. Help us to know your voice above all else, today and throughout this new year. Merciful Father, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Continuing in an attitude of prayer, we pray together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. How can I repay the Lord for all the benefits that he has given me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Would you please stand? Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, he took the cup of wine, and giving thanks, he, gave, he said, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come, my Lord. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we need to drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join in the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We many are one body, for we all share in one bread. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Please be seated. As a direction for administering, um, what we're asking is that people, when we give the little capsules out, if we could ask people just to hold on to them. If you want to get yourself ready, open them because they are a wee bit fidgety. But to hold off um, taking the, uh, the communion until afterwards, and then we will. Um, take it all together that idea that even though we cannot share a common cup at the minute we are still taking it uh, together
body of Christ keep you in eternal life. blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Light eternal, you have nourished us with the myst in the mystery of the body and blood of your Son. By your grace, keep us ever faithful to your word. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We're going to stand to sing our, our, our final hymn, hymn 443, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Hymn 443. <laughs> Peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.